Hello, welcome to healing-wellness.com. You've clicked on this video because you're either considering um, a mediumship session or you're um, signed up already for a session. And so this video is, is tips on how to get the most out of your set session, um, setting up the conditions um, for it to be a beautiful experience for you. So tips. The first tip is sign in early. Um, it's a real good idea. So then you're not rushing at the last minute trying to make connections with technology. There can always be something. So sign in, sign in early with your link, um, your Zoom link that you're going to be sent. Um, make sure you're in a quiet space and sit a few minutes before your session. Make sure there's not people running around. Extra people coming into the room will affect your reading. And so please uh, only have you unless you've arranged it um, to have somebody else because it will have an effect on the, the energy of the reading. Um, so take a few minutes, relax, um, make the intent. Um, if you're hoping to hear from a specific person, make that intent gently and then let it go because we we can't promise who will come in, but we can make the request. And, and so we just never know how it's gonna go. The people uh, in spirit see the bigger picture. And so sometimes it's for the greater good not to come in or say certain things, um, just for our own growth or even their own growth at the time. So. We never know. We don't see the bigger picture. So just come with an open heart. That's the most Im important thing. Um, let's see. Have a piece of paper and a pencil or, or pen ready um, to jot things down. Because uh, uh, you never know. Uh, afterwards, you could have written something down that was said in the reading. And you look it over and it's like, wow, that makes sense now. You know, so... It's really important to write stuff down as you go through the session. There are people that want to record. I, I prefer not a video recording, but if you want to record um, audio, that's fine. I just don't want it on the internet. Um, I want to be in control of what goes on the internet. So uh, it's a wild west out there sometimes. So let's see, what else do we want to cover? Um, so you're going to create a nice space Get yourself relaxed. No need to be uh, nervous at all. Um, just come in with, with an open heart, a sense of wonder and excitement, and uh, just go with the flow and see what happens. I find that that sets up a condition for the best possible um, experience. Um, what else? Let's see. Um, make sure that you don't um, come in with, like, wanting that one piece of evidence to prove that it's your loved one. Um, because um, they're working as hard as we are to receive the information. And so some they're using the medium's filters, the medium's uh, uh, experience, um, and they're doing the best they can. So if you're asking for a spe specific piece of information, it's like controlling the conversation when you're talking with someone and you're you're expecting them to say something <laughs> it's like, let them talk, let them share what they want to share. Um, and most of my attention will be on that connection. So I won't be talking with you a lot. Um, your role is to be the interpreter of the information that's coming through. I'm just going to tell you what's coming through. And you'll say, yes, yeah, I understand that. No, I'm not sure about that. Or maybe, um, but we don't want, we won't be getting in a conversation between us um, until the end. Um, but as we're, as we're, as I'm communicating with them, they're just going to send me information. I'm going to give that to you and you're going to interpret it and give me, let me give you an example of like how sometimes it works. Like I had, um, I had somebody that was, it was so amazing. Um, I got the name Sue and she goes, I don't know a, a person Sue. And this was her, her stepdad had come in. And he said all this information, and then he gave me the name Sue, and she said, I don't I don't know any Sue. And so that helped me, because I went back to him, and I said, can you clarify what you're meaning by Sue? Who, who is this? And he said, 
It's not a person named Sue. It's a boy named Sue, Johnny Cash. <laughs> and I mean, like, gee. And so, um, and it was a big, big, big um, important piece of information for, because, I mean, for them, he was always playing Johnny Cash music. That was his thing. And they would tease him about playing Johnny Cash music. And uh, it was just, you know, that was, that was great evidence for her. And it was just like, mind blowing she goes she just started laughing he was a johnny cash fan so that's how it can work i had another person who i said i see um he's showing me tattoos on his forearm and um that's a little unusual because sometimes people have them up here but he was showing me on the forearm and and the the person that was sitting there said well tell me what the tattoo is <laughs> and um well, it's not that if you have, if I try, it usually doesn't work. I just have to let them come through. But I said, okay, I'll ask. But you know, I I if I try, it usually doesn't work. I just have to let them be in control. So, but anyways, he he used an image of mine, which was the pink panther, and he didn't have a pink panther, but he did have a panther, uh, uh tattoo on it on his forearm, and so. That's evidential. And so that was very, very cool. I had another lady who, um, she said her, her son came in and she didn't understand um, the last piece of evidence, which was he was a teenager when he passed, but he showed me, he took me back to when he was a toddler age and he was holding a, a Easter basket and he had his finger on his tooth. And I and questioning, I said, you know, did he have something wrong with his tooth? And she goes, no. <laughs> and so um, I said, okay, we'll just write it down just in case. And so, well, that afternoon, her daughter came home, and her her aunt so and so had given her some pictures, some photographs, and she threw them on the table and said, aunt so and so said to go through these pictures, and see if you want any of them. Well, there it was. She came, she was going through those pictures and there it was. It was a picture of him as a toddler. He was about two years old. He was holding his Easter basket and he had his finger on his tooth like this. And it was just like, oh, wow. She sent me the photo and just that is such validation. You know, a lot of times afterwards, some of the biggest validations happen. So, so just be ready for surprises come in with an open heart. Don't try to test the medium. Don't try to get proof because um, you're, you're unknowingly sabotage the session. Energetically, we're working as a team. We're working with the person in spirit. We're working with um, you, the person that's sitting, and then we're working with the medium. So all three of us are creating a harmony together to create a frequency for communication to happen. And uh, we have to be working together to make this happen. Um, if somebody's over here with a lot of doubt and a lot of tension, then um, that can that can throw things off. That being said, if you don't get the person um, that you're wanting to ha come in, um, just know that sometimes that happens. And if we don't get the evidence we need, um, just know that sometimes that happens. We're not in control of this. Um, uh, it nobody's fault. It just just happens. Majority of the time, I do get people who who are very meaningful and family members and the person you wanted to hear from do, does come through. But every once in a while, for some reason, um, it's it's somebody else. Or, but what I've found is also that um, sometimes it'll be like somebody else bringing the person in that they that they want to hear from. Like, you know, if they're wanting to hear from their child, sometimes a grandparent will bring them in. So just be, just be um, easy, easy with it and just go with the flow. That's my best advice with all of it. Um, let's see what else, if I missed any, any points here. I think, I think that's about it. Um, uh. The three-way communication. Um, be patient in the beginning. Let let uh, me connect. I will probably be most likely be drawing, and the reason why I draw is it just seems to get me out of my mind. And so, um, 
I need to just be out of my thinking mind and into my receptive mind. And so that seems to be the way it works. So I started drawing and um, I have a little story on my website that shares about that. I won't share it here, but it's quite, quite amazing experience. Um, and if you're lucky, you'll get a drawing. I can't promise anything, but um, when it does come through, it's pretty, pretty amazing. But even if I'm sketching, that'll help, help with the flow. Um, what else here? Um, so you'll just be saying, yes, no, I don't know, I'm not sure. Or you'll you'll say, oh, well, that really makes sense. And then I'll kind of follow that, that line. Um, just know that um, the loss of a loved one is um, painful. And a mediumship reading is not going to take away your grief. It can help um, knowing that they're still here and that they give you amazing validations. And I hope that happens for you. Um, but just know that the grief is a process and uh, it hurts. I mean, I've lost uh, my, my, my brother. I've lost, um, and I don't want to say lost because you don't lose them, but you lose the physical contact, which is a big loss. You know, that's just the way it's true. And it's part of this human experience that we experience loss of all kinds. And um, hopefully that the reading will make it a little bit um, uh, easier in a sense that you know that they're still right here. Um, they're still looking after you. They still, the love never dies. Um, and, and the relationship never dies. It's uh, once we love someone, that love is eternal. And so, um, but I just want you to know that, that uh, it might it bring you some comfort and some validation. Um, but the but the grief will still be there for, you know I I don't think the grief ever goes away it changes it changes, but um, but the loss never never goes away. I still miss my brother, and I miss my partner, and uh, and so um, and lots of other people in my life. So I can relate to the pain, and of the loss. But I know I'll see them again. I've had three near death experiences in my life. And um, I can tell you from the bottom of my heart, we will see them again. And uh, anyway, so I wanted to make this video so that you would have a, a sense of how it will go and tips to make it make the, the reading um, the best experience possible. Um, I hope to see you soon. And uh, thank you for listening to this video. Thank you for coming to the website. God bless.